Mr. Bates. Giving it up at the Hotel California. That's saying the episode. There's a new name for terror, and it is Slashers, a horror movie podcast brought to you by two goons with nothing better to do on this Wednesday night. That's right. The veneer is gone. I admit we record on Wednesday. You might have had an inkling when we have a whole segment called Wednesday Warm Up, but now you know for sure. Brian, the gig is up. How the fuck are you? I'm good, man. Tired. Tired. Always, constantly. I feel like this is like married life. And like adulthood. Just wait for fatherhood. All rolled into one. Oh, so, Jesus. Yeah. I was telling Michelle the other day, like, uh, <laughs> the Avengers, uh, I don't know what the fuck it want, one it was, where Hulk, they're like, oh, well, when when are you mad? He's like, that's the trick. I'm always mad. Yeah. It's like that, but like for adulthood, it's like I'm always tired. Oh, like, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. The urgency to fall back asleep as a parent is scary. I don't know what it is with driving. Right. I feel like that's a thing. I don't know if it's like a medical term, but like I'll be perfectly awake and coherent. I'll jump on the freeway and I'll nod off. <laughs> well, there is there are some studies that show that, you know, with, when it comes to uh, motion sickness, one of the things your body tries to do is fall asleep as a defense mechanism huh. so that you're not nauseated. That's interesting. And so maybe you just look at the horizon, baby. Yeah, as I fucking plow into the back of my car or back of somebody else's car. Oh, that's pretty impressive. If you can plow into the back of your own car, you went through a wormhole. Drinky, drinky. <laughs> so you are now multiple weeks into wedded life. Oh, yeah, still got a hangover on that. Is the, is the honeymoon still going strong or is the honeymoon over, sweetness? Yeah, I mean, big secret. Uh, we were married beforehand. So <laughs> To other people? <laughs> no, just us. Um so Brian's whole... first and wife has one leg and lives in a trailer her named Beulah. <laughs> Down by the river. <laughs> no, you know, it's, uh, it's nothing different, you know? I mean, there's, I, I, that sounds really bad, right? There's nothing different, but we've, we've gone through the same motions before we, we've been technically married for over a year now. That's um, crazy. So that can't be true. Yeah. Over a year. I think pretty close to it no uh, no yeah you're you're a couple months off i feel like it's like that though you're close yeah but you're not there i was at the first one i you remember were. you were it's it's pretty rare for somebody to be there and you were there because what there was like six people there. yep so <laughs> suck it jim jake's the best best man yeah case I mean, in point but that does sound bad on my part because i'm like oh yeah we've been married for over a year and you're like no i hasn't been there it's this is the exact day you've been together <laughs> You know, yeah, that's true. Anyways, that's okay. I'm not judging you. I love when I, <laughs> when I depose people, the amount of guys who don't know their wife's uh, middle name, for instance, when they're married, the ages yeah. of their children, it would startle you how many men are like, oh, you know, what I think is so crazy, though, is <laughs> and it's so simple. The stupid reminders on Facebook that say, like, instead of me seeing Michelle and her last name. It's now my last name. Yeah. And I'm like, huh, <laughs> that's cool, right? It's like super small and minute, but I don't know. Yeah, actually, I'm the only member of my household who has a Facebook and it's for business. So I'm always like, smarmy joke about being an attorney. <laughs> and then some, like one of my clients is like, lol, 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 <laughs> with like the, the fucking laughing face while it's crying. Right. Meanwhile, if they found me on Instagram, they'd be like, I am shocked and appalled. Your name is an amalgamation of John Wayne Gacy and Casey Jones from Ninja Turtles <laughs> that you are being a violent homosexual rapist and a cartoon character. I can't die. Not the fact that he's a violent vigilante, but just the fact he's a cartoon. Right, character. right. Which goes back. I never got a definitive answer. If there's anybody out there who's into anime porn, do the artists masturbate to their own porn? This is a question that has plagued me, but I don't They're want just, it in my search history. I need answers. You just got to throw a poll up there. Right. Or like one of the questions That's on good. Instagram. Yeah. With we're like a be bunch doing of tentacles some... flowing around everywhere. <laughs> we're doing some anime. Yeah. I put up a poll and we got a, bu or a, a oh, really? question and we got a bunch of good responses nice. as far as recommendations nice. go. It's hard with anime because I am very against sexual uh, violence against and anyone. <laughs> they are all about that. Oh, yeah. They're like, <laughs> oh, this is a 13 year old girl. Well, a wizard gives her giant tits and rapes her to death. Yeah. And you're like, oh. Yeah. No. 
Yeah, again, I, I feel like I mentioned it before, but uh, one of my go-tos as far as when I want to go back into watching some anime, I usually watch Ninja Scroll. And it's like an iconic film. Um, but there's a lot of that kind of cringy, cringy stuff to it. It's not like to the point where you're like, that's full on hentai, but, uh, you get the idea, you know, it's yeah. not a 10 out of 10 tie. It's a <laughs> six out of 10 tie. Right, right, right. It's a, it's, it's, there's some cringy moments to it. Not unlike, uh, Cujo, right? I feel like there's a cringy moment in Cujo as well. Mm. Right. Yeah, but it's nowhere near as bad as the book, so I'll take it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. See, I get to play like the fucking ignorant one here because um, I feel like that helps a lot, though. Because if it's just both of us talking out of the side of our mouth, like, "Well, you know, the book is blah blah," <laughs> people are like, "Well, I didn't yeah, read the book." Yeah, yeah, that's true. And and we both went like I feel like above and beyond with um Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. Right? Oh God. Read the book, watched the movie twice, and the movie's three hours long. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was. That it was, was a fucking crazy. gauntlet. That wasn't an episode. That was a gauntlet. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. It well, was what, like, like three. Carry... It was like three and a half hour long episode or yeah. something like I that. I feel bad that you missed out on uh, fourteen oh eight because that's a novella that's twenty one pages. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I was like about an hour and a half, two hours into um, listening to Cujo, and uh, I get a text back and forth from you and Chad. You're like, yeah, I don't. I haven't gotten to Cujo at all. It's like six hours into the. To a book i don't know i'm like ah fuck this shit start reading up on like the you know the info or the um imdb little little tips or whatnot going into the film and uh, apparently uh stephen king was completely shit-faced when he wrote this book uh so very that, alice cooper that coupled with uh your guys's kind of explanation of what's going on and i was like ah, you know what maybe i'll skip this one the good old alice said there are years of his life in the 80s he just doesn't remember it all like before he would open his eyes, he'd be drinking booze. And then, you know, he's this very like charming, nice man who plays golf now. Yeah, but you know what that I feel like that's the difference between like Alice Cooper and like Motley Crue, right? Whereas they just did hard drugs, like heroin and stuff like that, and they're they're all fucked. They're all oh, completely yeah. fucked up. You can't enter Pamela Anderson and not come out a different man. <laughs> but also like Alice Cooper was a fucking dork. Like that's true. The whole reason he got into music was his fucking track team. Did you know this? No, I didn't. So they did a charity event and they created a fake band to do this event. And when they would go, because they were like a badass track team, when they would go, they would do like war chants and be very theatrical. Nice. That started the whole fucking thing. So he's, and like that picture of him with the snake, it's that like, he's a very interesting guy, but it all comes out of the place of being a dork who likes horror. And it's like, if I had the opportunity to be the first Alice Cooper, like, you ever do that? You go, you think back in time, it's like, if Who I had the, the first chance. one to create that kind exactly. of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Because like, look at like Marilyn Manson, for example. He's just Alice Cooper with tits. Huh. They used to be That's fake true. tits and now they're real tits. Get some weight I was just thinking, uh, you know, it was like the Alice Cooper of like more or less like the more heavy metal kind of uh, genre, I guess, is um, King uh, King Diamond. Yep. Right? Is that your... <laughs> That's why I did the inverted cross on my forehead. Yeah, for That's sure. That's funny that we were both thinking it. Yeah. If I wasn't getting over a cold, I would try and do the shrieky Oh, dude, look. I can't even do it. I don't no. even have a cold, but I'm pretty sure I would fuck something up if I tried. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my new thing. So when my friends and I used to go to Frankenstein back in the day, which is a kind of like think Comic Con where you don't have to pay to get in and there's not stupid costumes everywhere. But uh, there is hentai everywhere. There is? Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, it's like behind the scenes, but there's it's totally there. Oh, like an underground trade. <laughs> you. But when we would lose one another, and this is like the guys in my old bands and stuff, uh, we would go. Ooh, ooh. And so now I'm trying to teach the baby to do it. It's very funny, <laughs> considering she has a very tepid grasp nice, when it comes nice, to nice. English as a concept. Yeah, one of the things that I feel like uh, you didn't necessarily think that it could be kind of sort of hentai is i always noticed there were like schoolgirl pillows have you ever seen that Online, they're like yeah. anime schoolgirl pillows I like saw guys, a guy who was like it's like a full up. body pillow where like a guy's like no this is just really comfortable it helps me go to sleep <laughs> yeah sure it does bud <laughs> well, people like take those to prom one guy what? bought one yeah or is like, that like a, uh, married that's one. a thing well, apparently wow. one dude married his Nintendo 3DS that had like some kind of app or game where it's a girl. So it's like the movie Her? I guess so. Right? It's not it wasn't that. Yeah. That's a movie, right? Where he puts the phone and he can, she can see out. Yeah. I thought that was Scarlett Johansson. It's apparently 
Rashida Jones. Her oh, whole really? life is a lie. Interesting. It's got that raspiness to it. Huh. I liked her in uh, Parks and Rec. I did. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. a sad person in The Office. I feel yeah, like- she is a sad person in The Office because I kind of felt like I wanted her to get with Jim. And then, yeah. I, you know, I mean. That's more real life. Okay. That's where I was going to. I was like, am I weird for thinking that? Because everybody's like so team fucking Pam and Jim. And I'm like, ah. Every episode, or excuse me, every relationship on that show deals with infidelity at a certain point. Right. Every single one. When it's Michael and Jan, you know, he ends up with Carol. So there's that kind of triangle. When it's, when it's Dwight and Angela. And then Andy. And Andy. Uh, you have Dwight, or excuse me, you have Angela, the senator. And, uh, well, uh, actually, Kevin hooked up with the girl from the dating website or the the singles meet. Yeah, with the white. But glove I don't thing. think it was like a there was like kind of any um, infidelity. But she in wasn't that. an existing character. I think That's I, true. I, I okay. should add that caveat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because like Bob Vance and Phyllis don't have infidelity, but she has the fear of infidelity. Right, 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 right. Holly ends up with age. It, it's very gross. <laughs> we just watched the one where. Uh, Bob and Phyllis invite Jim and Pam to lunch and they, and they do it fuck. and they do it in the fucking bathroom it's so gross when she comes back and she's gulping down she's water all it's flustered. Like, oh. she's all flustered and you're like damn Phyllis getting it she reminds me of the uh, the drama teacher in the faculty she's just like splashing the water in her face when she's <laughs> inhabited by aliens yeah yeah so should we actually talk about the movie I mean we could the, the great thing is <laughs> is we'll still have plenty of time to do it because there is not much plot no, there's not. There's not actually not a lot of um, like setting really or like scenes like within different areas. Right. There's like, OK, there's uh, Tad's house, Tad's bed. There is like a brief uh, shot of like the post office. There's him driving around town. There is the mechanic. I mean, there's some shots of them when they're in New York and stuff or Boston, but doesn't matter. That's oh. the thing. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... Those things are just breezed over. So like like there's if you did this as a stage play, you could do it with a very minimal budget. Yeah, I'd say it's it's probably like four different scenes. Yep. I think I would love to see the kids who did that alien production do this. Yeah. It'd be dope. Ryan, how many fucking dogs were there in this movie? There were five. That's what some people say. Some people say there are five. But if you ask the lady who played Donna, she said ten. The kid. What's his name? Oh, uh, yeah. The director said 10. The kid who played Tad said 7. Donna said 5. Nobody knows. But we do know that according to some stats and an article called A Pack of Bogus Bernards give, helps give Cujo its bike, a, an August 19th, 1983 LA Times article, that's how deep I butt fucking go, people, on my research. They attribute it to four St. Bernards, several mechanical dogs, <laughs> and a black rubber dog, great, great Dane mix, and a man in a costume. <laughs> um, bravo. Bravo. You. I tried. Uh, oh. So the, the stuntman was Gary Morgan, who would put on the, co- the dog costume. It was actually kind of terrifying, and I think that's where Furry started. And he's the one headbutting the door. Okay, that makes me feel a lot better, right? But it's Be- still a person. No, I understand. C-T-E. I, I, <laughs> I understand, so a person. But I will always root for an animal over a person. And but that's, that's just me. I that's don't know. the director knew that. <laughs> that's a crazy thing. Do you ever see the dog come to physical harm in the movie? No. no. You always see you always see Donna swinging the bat, and then it pans over to the dog, and he's getting up. Yep. Like he, you just woke fucking Beethoven up, like from deep sleep, and he's getting up. And that's the thing. You don't even see the puncture. You don't see. It. And the whole point of it is, even though this is a murderous, evil dog, it's people would react poorly and donna is not a likable character she's more sympathetic in the movie than the book by far is she oh yeah in the book i don't like her as a person and it has very little to do with her infidelity even because that's obviously a very interesting part of her character arc right Um, but she's just a shitty person like she yells at her kid all the time and she's very petty and she's jealous and stuff Um, one thing that i find that's really interesting is god i'd say at least half or if not three quarters of the films that we've done have had the male be the douche yeah, and the girl being like the, you know, the protective one, the, the innocent one out of the two, the battered girlfriend nod back to blood diner. Right. Exactly. Whereas with what we have now is completely different. Yeah. And that kind of threw me for a loop. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, just it's wait not till we get cool, to... but you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I see what you mean. 
it's roundabout cool. Did you know that in 2015 they announced they were doing a reboot of Cujo, but it's an acronym? If I gave you a million dollars to come up with a dumb oh God. acronym for Cujo, could you do it? Nope. Canine Unit Joint Operations. I feel like that could actually be a thing. Oh. It seems like it's like you have dogs, like tactical dogs, like fucking going in and, uh, you know, in raids and whatnot. Like uh, Halle Berry's dogs in John oh, Wick 3. dude. Michelle and I saw it. Bite the dick. Oh my god, it was so good. I didn't like her though. She did the same like trying to do a, a bullshit Hurricane Rana like three times. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what are you, I, Lita from Dark Angel? You fuck. I like the fact that the dogs um, still were attacking unconscious bodies. Yeah. Right? They're shaking violently and it's like the guy's clearly dead. But it's like, well, you haven't told me to release. So I'm just going to continue to fuck the shit up. And then she's like, okay, come. And then they fucking go. I yeah. think that's Makes sense. I would love to see those two dogs versus Cujo. Oh, That's a would, fucking would, cage they match. They would fuck Cujo up. Do you think? Yeah, I think they would be like uh, death by a thousand cuts. They'd be quick. They'd be com coming in and jumping back out before the fucking St. Bernard. T to be fair, Cujo from the movie, yeah. Cujo from the book, I no. don't feel like it. Because that dog, like the way it's described, at least, like when he headbutts the, the car door, he's like gushing blood out of his head. And he's like, I don't care. I don't feel shit. Well, so, part from the movie itself, it seemed like it was almost like two reasons for him to bash his head in. Right. Because he's like clearly has some fucking parasite eating brain worms going on in his fucking noodle. And he's also just like upset because there's a bunch of loud noise going on yeah the phone's ringing at that point. right that's so, a, that's consistent with between the bull oh okay so here's my thing let me ask you, you we've talked about it many times you have gandalf tattooed across your titties you're a lord of the rings fan yep if it's halle berry's two dogs and they do take down cujo does one say to the other it still counts as one <laughs> it's a gimli reference you fucks read a book or listen to the audio book. I was going to say, read it. Well, does Gimli say it in the book? I don't think so. No. I don't think he does. Not close at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's even like... I'm like, actually... <laughs> there's so many things like... Hey, that, like the with the... No, come fucking, claim him. I'm like, what the... F well, okay. I mean, any any and all that has to do with Legolas. So you're just like, get the fuck out of here. Who is this? Right? <laughs> you're just an extra the, bitch. Nobody knows who that is. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't in The Hobbit. Enough. <laughs> I, I don't have the patience for it. So yeah. moving on. Did you know they had to tag the, the dog's tails down because the wagging was so apparent? You know what? I did notice one time in the film. Ooh, I, I think it's where his neighbor, the mechanic's neighbor gets killed Jerry. first. Yep. And uh, he like he gets attacked and then he he gets attacked outside. Then he goes running in the house Is and the side he tries profile? to get the shotgun. Yeah. Right. And then so he's in the in the hallway and the dog gets through, Cujo gets through the door and he comes fucking flying at him, knocks him over and it's kind of like the side profile where it's like the stairs and it's him with his feet kind of like thrashing up and down and you see the dog and it's just wagging its old tail. <laughs> well, it's, it's also funny because for those of you watching the video podcast like your shit on YouTube, uh, his butt's this way, you can see the tail shoots out and juts out <laughs> but then it goes right back to the back of his knee so not only is his entire ass rump moving but the tail is wagging being tethered it's way more distracting but yeah yeah you know, which I, you gotta whistle while you work you right know? let him have his jingle but there <laughs> are some times where it's so distracting because it's this pluming fur and then you see that what's clearly a band of string right, around it. right right yeah it's such a minute thing but you know what it kind of reminded me that like even when dogs are wagging their tail, they can still be aggressive. Yeah. That's like, that's still a thing. That's right? my dog. That's not them just being like, oh, this is all fun and games. I'm not going to fucking attack you. Like, d they don't differentiate the two. Um, Hemi is the same way. Like, he'll clearly be wagging his tail and a dog will come near him and they'll see the wagging tail and be like, oh, this is cool. And then he's like, I'll fucking kill you. And they're like, okay, I'm gone. I've seen some shit. <laughs> but, uh, the Bernards of saintliness. Do you know how they got them to attack the car? It's very similar to the baboons. I was say, in the, the baboons. Omen. I want to say I think it was with the baboons, right? So it's like a favorite toy. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. It's very interesting because there's an old adage in 
Hollywood. You never work with animals and you never work with children. And this movie did both and it's very successful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially um, like how young the kid is. Fucking Tad. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like uh, he did really well, right? I mean, I genuinely felt like he was afraid for his life. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Oh, well, that goes, goes to something we'll talk about later. But the gal who played Donna has uh, an undergrad degree in psychology. And so before they would start shooting, she'd be like, now, you know, this is fake because she was worried that he wouldn't be able to differentiate like, like traumatized kid. Yeah, yeah. because he wouldn't be sense. able to dissociate what is fantasy and what is reality. Well, not only that, but I mean, somebody that young and impressionable, you can imagine. Um, well, fuck, are they going to want to be around dogs like at all after this? Yeah. Right. I don't know. Completely anecdotally, he's a furry now. I don't know. Just kidding. I don't know. I listened to a couple interviews with him, but he didn't. He didn't wear a furry costume, but he didn't not wear one at twenty four seven. So he was in Who's the Boss? Did he play a furry on Who's the Boss? Uh, no. Well, and I don't know why you'd even bring it up, Ryan. <laughs> uh, we have. Oh, did you know this is inspired on true events? Really, Stephen King went to a back roads. A uh, guy who did mechanic work out of his barn and had a dog come up that was uh, aggressive and it inspired him. He was getting his motorcycle work done. Stephen King was also probably fucking shit faced. Yeah. I'm surprised <laughs> he could even sit, sit up right on a motorcycle, much less get it there. And it was probably like a little like. That dog's just wagging his tail and he's like, the fuck? It's a French poodle and he's like, look, you dog, you don't look at me that way. I am very Pennywise. Uh, shit. And it was shot in winter. Looks super summery, right? It it's does. not. It does, especially with uh, with all the sweat and perspiration on their face. That is a type of uh, simple syrup that is sugary, so it glistens. And really? the flies went butt fucking chow on those people. Wow. Yep. And uh, huh? Uh, the director approximated it to be forty degrees outside. So eventually, the guy who played Donna is like, "Hey." Uh, Put heaters in the car. This is unsafe. We shouldn't have a child in this condition. We have to do this. So they put the heaters in the cars, but then it fucked up the sound quality. So they would only have them in between takes. So by the time it would heat up, two huh. seconds later, the camera's rolling. It's off. That's crazy. It's so cold, in fact, that when she shovels or she's like hand ladling water into the kid's mouth, it's actually hot water because he was fucking freezing laying there without a shirt on the table. Huh. Makes yep. sense. We're, we're nearing the end of trivia, folks. I tried to keep it to interesting shit because you can imagine anything Stephen King's automatically going to have a bunch of entries a on IMDb. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, the kid dies in the book. We mentioned that. We'll get into it. She, Animal she ends up getting rabies, right? Oh, yeah. Hard. She yeah. bites a motherfucker and he has to get rabies shots. Really? Yeah. Wow. We'll get into it. Animal tra trainer Carl Miller wanted to use a different type of dog because St. Bernard's are hard to train. So that's something I thought was kind of interesting. And then they're like, nope. And he's like, okay. Didn't I, I think I read somewhere that um, they actually, on some of the shots, they changed it to Rottweiler. They were going to. Oh, they, they did in, not. In the fog, they actually did the costume for the Labrador. And they were like, this looks ridiculous. We're not doing it. So they just stuck with the St. Bernard's. Why the fuck would you do a Labrador? They were, it was a Labrador in a St. Bernard costume. I swear. That's dogception. Footage exists somewhere <laughs> of it. He was like, we watched, we watched the dailies. It looked terrible. So we just redid it. Oh, and that's Here's awful. a fun fact. When it comes to that fog scene, generally, that is a very foggy area. It is up right, in Northern right, California. Right. It wasn't foggy. So they had to use, uh, what, uh, they're called naval swampers, I think. And they're from World War II. And we used to use them to hide ships as they oh, were entering the harbor. So these things are industrial. They're blowing. And you, you can see footage of the, uh, you know. I wonder if you used them in uh, Salem's Lot. With the fucking kid floating around outside the fucking. I don't feel like that's outside though. It's because it's a, a, <laughs> that's you know, true. a that's controlled soundstage. I think they're able to yeah. do it. But this was outdoors. Yeah. It looks like a soundstage because there's so much fog you can't see on. But I thought it was very effective. Yeah. Actually, I think I read something about that where they said that uh, the fire department came. Yeah. They're exactly. like, yeah, we thought there was a fire. So who's going to pay us? Exactly right. <laughs> Money, please. <laughs> what do you think they used as foam for the dogs? <sighs> I don't know, but all I can say is I could not stop staring at like a greenish yellow pus yeah. coming from his face, and it was fucking gross. It's gnarly. Uh, they used egg whites. 
Really? But then the dogs would lick it up, so they'd have to reapply, distract the dog, <laughs> get the shot. It sounds and like then... the dogs had a pretty sweet gig. Except for the one that died of bloat. Well, but is that something that could directly be from filming? Or is that like, like a undisclosed, like something that the dog had? I don't know. Uh, when because the director proudly said that no animals were injured during the filming, so it might be something that was pre-existing or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, nope, second to last one. Yeah, we'll just do the last one. How many pintos does it take to get to the mo- no? How many pintos were in the movie? Uh, this is just shot in the dark. Three, double it. Really? Yeah, because wow. they were they would cut into they, the well, cars from different angles. I was say, it did get fucked up. Yeah. So. I guess that makes sense. And producer Chad and I were talking about one of the reasons that you can see that the windows are all so smeared isn't just because Cujo slobbering on it, but also for continuity of shot because when they're relocating the car day to day and they're doing that makes sense. It makes it a little bit easier. Wow. So shall we get into statistics? Yeah, let's do it, man. Dun da da da. Budget eight million dollars. Gross twenty one point two million dollars. Yeah, that was a success. It was. They described it as a, quote, moderate success. <laughs> uh, opening weekend, August 12th, 1983. The book was released in 1981. That is an incredibly fast turnaround to take a book and turn it. That shows yeah. the kind of aplomb that N- Stephen King had at that time. Right, right. They just want to turn around and throw it out there like, right yeah. away. The competition, Curse of the Pink Panther, The Man Who Wasn't There, Smokey and the Bandit 3. <laughs> Not a hard weekend. Didn't something else come out around the same year? Like a, another horror film? Or no? There's a few. No. But this comes two weeks after National Lampoon's Vacation and one week after Risky Business. Oh, wow. That's some stiff competition. Seriously. Yeah. And especially when you have a younger audience who can go into it. It's interesting. Uh, Runtime, 93 minutes. Was it easy, breezy, super beautiful, easy. cover girl? Yeah, super easy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I feel like um, uh, it kind of dragged on a little bit. In the part where like it's him like out of town yeah. going through his bullshit right exactly. where it's just like eh, i mean it goes with the story but other than that um as soon as it goes back to them being stuck at the outside the mechanics house that's where it kind of sped up and it's the same in the book where they they belabor the point about those stupid raspberry singers so much and it's just like i thought that stephen king was patting himself on the back like look i could have been an ad man too i'm not just a novelist and it's so not clever and very heavy handed. Like you think kids want to buy cereal because of a professor and a sweater. Like right. it, it's yeah. very obtuse. The and whole I mean, thing's weird. It's definitely a unique like thought on like out of all the different um jobs that you could write into a book for like a father figure to have. It's somebody who creates jingles. Right. That just well, ads, well, at yeah. least I mean, that's what I got from the movie. Right. It's, it's, yeah. So it's an ad. Exactly. Basically. OK. But that's still kind of very unique. Right. I yeah. don't know. It seems it's like, very niche. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to have a relative experience with that guy. You know, I guess you could have like, oh, it's a stressed dad doing a pencil pushing job. But at the same point, he's like jet setting and it's odd. Anyway, directed by Louis Teague. Do you think he was the first director on this film? Um, John Carpenter. No, sorry. It was John Carpenter was going to do it, right? And then he's like, fuck that. I'm not. Did you read that? He was in discussions. He ended up doing Christine years later. Okay. So. But it was uh, Peter Mendak who quit two days into filming. So it was originally with one company, goes to Warner Brothers. In between that, uh, because Stephen King had seen Alligator, which just directed in 1980, which is kind of like a satirical horror film. Okay. Uh, they like wanted Toronto, him in. Basically. Yeah. So then he comes in, they do like a two day thing, and then he ends up getting the job. Oh. Huh. And written by Don Carlos Dunaway, Lauren Courier, and Stephen King. And Stephen King did the initial draft, and they were like, you changed it too much. Then they brought another guy who made it too accurate, was too long, and they came <laughs> in and just cut out the subplots, which the subplots suck in this book. They're not very fulfilling at all. It's just fluff. I mean, the subplots kind of suck in the movie, too. Yeah. And imagine how much longer they are in the book. Right, right. Jesus. Which, um, yeah, that's that's really crazy to think about. It's 93 minutes, right? And you're like, oh, that's so nice. They add extra shit. And you're just like, oh, fuck. When is this over? Well, if you add even a, like a couple of minutes of plot, it's tethered to so much other bullshit in the book that you would be adding another 20 minutes. Right. In actuality. Right. right. So the um, Stephen King's biographer had talked about having multiple discussions with Stephen where in his mind, the uh, what is it? Frank Dodd. 
there in the book there's a serial killer who's secretly serial cop. killer detective or something yeah. like that and it, it his spirit is reincarnated into Cujo. and i was like that's awful and the director yeah. was like no we're just gonna keep it real and i think that like Did, do they make reference to him at all in the film there's one very brief reference but it's nothing in in okay. significant detail they don't tether it to the dog I was like i don't even recall hearing it in the, in they the, just in the say the, the name okay but uh it, it's I think it takes a lot of balls in the 80s to do a movie of just about a rabid dog. No supernatural, no mutant gene, no radioactive whatever. Yeah, but I kind of like it. I like it because it's um, something that's realistic. It's something that could happen like right now. We open up the garage and I get attacked by a rabid dog. Which would be rad. No mm. offense. But yeah, the only thing that doesn't age well is she doesn't have a cell phone. But you can yeah. easily make it. They're in a rural area. She doesn't get reception. Yeah, absolutely. Then you can have the glimmer of hope where she gets that second of reception and gets like a bunch of text messages and she's like, oh, fuck. And she tries to make a call and she loses the reception. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, she's like, she's like, fuck you, AT&T. And then she just like, you know, phone explodes or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> Blows up in her face. <laughs> so they had toyed with actually incorporating the demon in the closet from the book. And then they're like, nope, we're yeah, not doing it. I mean, there's kind of like hints here and there um i got a little bit into the book where you know he basically hears like a hissing voice like talking to him and uh yellow and, eyes right and in in the movie uh his closet does open up a little bit right and they they even make reference to where like furniture is moved around in yep. the house in, in his room right and that's something where they're like oh it wasn't me it wasn't me huh who was it? And, you know, Tad says, well, it was a monster. And that does happen in the book, too, right? Yep. Yeah. And one of the things that's interesting in the way that they depict it in the movie is when the dad closes the door, it opens right away. So it almost shows like, oh, it's a defective ha- like right, handle, right, which right, right. makes I it seem so too. much more reasonable to the dad. Yeah. But when you're deal- like completely disavowing the <laughs> mysticism of it, I think it's a very interesting, relatable scene. Yeah. We'll get into some of the ways that they shot it. Very interesting. But I think first we need to get into nicknames. Dick names. Snick names. Prick names. D. Wallace as Donna Trenton. What do you got? Uh, I got nothing. I want to call her Infidel Castro. Because huh. she was infidelitous. Is that a word? I think so. Because infidelity is <laughs> a word, so why not? Infidelity is a word, definitely. Um, infidel Castro, I like We it. can just call her infidel. Good enough. Perfect. Danny Pintaro. It's almost That's Pinto. That's the, the husband? No, that's uh, Tad Trenton. That's Tad. Um, so he got this part because his mom was a hairstylist who had a picture of him on her you know, salon station. And everyone was like, oh, he's so cute. So she took some pictures, sent it to a modeling agency. Oh, the next shit. day he had a job and then he ends up getting this film. That's fucking crazy. Right? Uh, uh, Tadpool. That's totally fine with me. I mean, that's his nickname, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I got, an, ain't got no problem with that. Daniel Hugh Kelly as Vic Trenton. Feature film debut. He had done that's, some TV stuff that's before. Husband. That's husband. That's husband. Um, Cuckold. <laughs> I mean, what else can you call him? Um, oh, what was his name? Uh, not Hasselhoff. Oh, I was going to call. I, funny <laughs> enough, I, I had made a note to call Tad David Tadselhoff, but I didn't do it. <laughs> Whoops. It's the hair, right? Uh, but I feel like everybody had that hair back then. Yeah, exactly. So um, <laughs> what'd you call him? Cuckold. <laughs> that's what for those of you who don't know a, a cuck is not a relatively recent term cuckoldry goes all the way back shakespeare even used the word really? cuckoldry. yeah i think it's an othello he talks very specifically oh, about cuckoldry. so yeah he's a cuckold he's a cuckold it's objectively true we have christopher stone as steve kemp married or at least living together with d married. wallace i think he was married there. yeah yeah so he's steve kemp what do you want to call this guy uh, in the book when he fucks up the house, he comes on their bed. What? He jacks off. And it, like they describe it that he's so riled up, it's like three jerks. Wow. So you know when you mime it? You're, it's there. You want to call him Jack Mehoff? Jack Mehoff? Perfect. You got Ed Lauder as Joe Camber. Who cares? Caillou Liani as Charity Camber. Billy Jacoby. What is that? That's nope. two first names with Y's on it. Nothing. Uh, Mills Watson. Jerry Harden. Sandy Ward, okay. Arthur Rosenberg. 
who was the mechanic? He was in a lot of shit. Yeah, that's Ed Lauder. Okay. We have anything for him? Uh, mechanic. Call him Jason Statham because he was in the mechanic. <laughs> no good? Well, no, Charles Bronson yeah. was in the original mechanic, right? I don't know. I have no idea. In the book, nothing. I mean, he's a shitty guy in the book. Like, they, they definitely tone down his shittiness. Like, he is outwardly violent to his wife. He threatens her. Uh, you know, he's going to go whoring when she goes off to visit her sister. It's pretty bad. The McCann dick. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I had to wipe my nose because I'm a gross g- genetic freak. But yes. You hear that? Oh, God. Oh, God. It's everywhere. Oh. <laughs> so that's it for nicknames. Recapitation. Oh. Yeah. Woman is whore. Goes. Gets car. Fixed question mark. No. Man tries get whore, dies dog. Woman almost dies dog. Boy almost dies dog. No one dies but dog. We're like, what, three weeks past? So she married an axe murder? <laughs> or so he married an axe murder and you're still doing it? Yeah. Okay. It worked. <laughs> I could have done it in haiku form, but I decided to spare you. Jesus. Okay. Chad, how many syllables is it? Is it seven, four, seven? You like how Chad just automatically going to know this. He's like, huh. He's hmm. got a Google machine on his head tip. He's actually editing something. He smiles because he knows we're talking about him, but he's not <laughs> going to help us out at all. Anyway. Chad's busy doing busy work. So, Brian, would you like to take us through the movie? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, start out with uh, Sweet Ass Chasing. Sweet ass car chase. No, not a car chase scene. It's a rabbit fucking booking it for its life because uh, you got a fucking St. Bernard after him. And I really like that it starts off with like blood swirling on black and then it goes to that serene scene. Totally yeah, catches you off guard. Right, right, right. And it's funny because the the music doesn't tie well with what's actually happening in the scene because like you originally like you hear the music and it's like very enchantful and like it's the light that you know you're like oh this is fun they're in a park and then like the dog clearly tries to rip its head off yeah and you're like fuck dude he is not fucking around um rabbit (laughs) runs away from him um goes into a log crosses a stream dog puts head in log it's super funny um it's very homeward bound in yeah, that capacity and exactly like lumbers exactly. through the water and right right so rabbit goes into a rabbit hole um where there are some fake bats where you can clearly see string oh yeah did you see that oh yeah <laughs> okay so there's and it's clearly stock footage of bats when they're screeching and it's, yeah, yeah yeah that's nothing that was new um so dogs barking its head off in the bat hole um rabbit's like fuck you um whatever i'm gonna go shit in your fucking your food um because it's like rabbit pellets and it's kind of like dog food um fun fact the book ends <laughs> talking about the rabbit which couldn't escape the cave and oh, starved really? to death and its bones lay with the bones of other Why animals could not escape the cave it was like cujo's like fucking spirit like haunting him and he's just like well I'm... you know what's weird though is rabbits like like scare very easily yeah to the point do you know this is a weird random fact but rabbits um, have a defense mechanism where their heart stops. Playing dead? They no, they straight up die. Like they uh they can't like fend for themselves instead of feeling like the amount of pain and fucking torture they're about to go in, their heart stops. Huh. <laughs> Neato. It's fucking weird. And they let out like a super high shrill. Have you ever seen uh the it's a uh, is it a lizard? Where its eyes explode, the capillaries in its eyes explode, and it spritz out blood from it to like no. it's like sour, tingy blood that's oh, distasteful. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. It does it to itself. It's like you want to eat me, dude. Animals are fucking crazy, Weird, right? right? Like skunks. I mean, just skunks. The concept. Right? And it's like platypi are poisonous. You know that? Yeah. They have stingers. What the fuck? <laughs> Animal Planet fucking crazy i would love to do that show if anybody wants to finance a wild boy style slasher oh, that would be fucking sweet I'll f- i hey, would love to sign me up you know how many times i send these fucks videos of like a snapping turtle biting into a melon and stuff <laughs> and I'm like, it's amazing and people are like what? it's a live dinosaur That's so me. cujo um barks his head off wakes the bats bats freak out bat chomps down on cujo's fucking nose which i I really like 
the fact that the the nose wound is throughout the movie. Yep. Right. Good continuity. It's it's not something where he gets bit, there's a little bit of blood, and then all of a sudden he's just like this super freaky dog. Like it's a continuous like festering wound throughout. And it's good that it shows a ramping up to the rabies because in the book it does a very good job of pacing, but it also gets into the meta elements of third person narrative because the narrator knows what he's thinking and knows the confusion oh, and knows right, the right, taste right, of how right. bad water is because he's hydrophobic at that point. It's very interesting. I thought that huh. was good and they articulate it well in the movie like when Joe and Jerry are sitting there talking shit and you know he's like that dog you couldn't sick him on me if I if came I at you with two straight, razor yeah, yeah two straight razors yeah. You could see that he's you know whimpering because of the clanging of the bottles and stuff and it, it escalates and I like it a lot. I think yeah. it was very effective without being over the head of like having a new narrator over the movie be like the dog is upset <laughs> like no fucking shit yeah exactly exactly um so then does it it cuts to tad are taking a right? piss right yeah okay tadpole sitting there draining the liz <laughs> goes to his room and he plays a fun little game where he tries i, to I turn remember off i remember doing it as a kid oh yeah right yeah. Well, I love it, it. I don't know if it was a fuck up that they kept or if it was where, where, where he like jumps before he turns it off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me so much of like Star Lord when he drops the Infinity Stone and he picks it up. That was not playing. That was just him fucking up. I, I really like to think that the kid just fucked up and because he tries to swipe the light switch down, doesn't do it, has to come back. And then yeah, it's very it's very believable. It's something that I did as a kid. Yeah. I mean, along the lines with like fucking the floor is lava. Yeah. When the lights go out, it's a different room. Oh, really? It's actually an elongated room. If you can huh. look, the perspective is significantly different because they want to show like how dire the circumstance is when he's afraid. It seems like so much more. Oh, you know what? I did. Us. I did remember that. It almost seemed like it was a slow mo shot of him like running to the bed and like it's sprinting, so yeah. fucking far. And then the way that the camera goes, they had to build a special hoist because he's up above and he had to swing because if you remember... The kid runs to the bed and goes underneath the camera and sprawls out. Right, right, right. Kind of fun. That's really I mean, cool. Yeah, you know, especially absolutely. when you think about, because this movie's kind of like phone book booth in a lot of ways, where you're in this tiny little space. You could imagine getting kind of like bogged into a corner if you're the director of photography. But it doesn't look like a static movie at all, especially yeah. when you compare it to movies of that time. Some of the movies of the 80s, you're like, fuck, like, kill me. I'm not going to sit and watch the same static shot of somebody <laughs> walking around their kitchen for 20 minutes. Right, right, right. Huh. So, so then in, in the movie, I forget, does he get scared and scream and that's when the parents? Yep. Okay. So it's the same that's in the book. Very, right. Yeah. Does it show the like closet opening up or is it more or less in the book than it was in the movie? I forget. It's well, so it's kind of hard to answer that because Donna talks about multiple times being afraid of that closet in the book. The closets for some reason, like nine feet deep because of the structure of the house. The closet very also has an like entity in it. Yeah. For no reason. It has no, really? bearing. it doesn't make any sense in the book. Like there's huh. a yellow eyed entity and it only makes sense in the sense that, uh, Tad is afraid it's of the, monsters. It's a child's imagination. But it's be, it's more effective if it is just his imagination, because when his dad says the monster words to make the monster go away, when the kid has the monster words in the fucking car, he's trying to make the monsters go away. And here's a real life here's monster. Here's a fucking dog. Everything like, his dad said didn't exist and he can't escape it. He's like, thanks, dad. <laughs> well, then in the fucking, in the book, when the kid fucking dies, the dad sees this yellow piece of paper in the Pinto and he picks it up and he realizes it's the monster words that he wrote to his kid because he was going to be on a business trip. And he wanted the kid to feel safe and his fucking kid is dead. So he wads up the monster words and throws them on Cujo's corpse. It's a dark scene. Wow. Ew, that's crazy. It's hard, right? I mean, that's yeah. just cringy to think about. So this scene, I think, did a really good job. Uh, it's effective. It's pretty low cost when you think about everything. And it's also, it's it's good at making sure that your perspective is, isn't that the kid's like a prima donna or something. It's just right, right. as kids do. Yeah. And then, uh, so, it, you know, has the dad going over the words with the kid, right? Yep. With Tad. Um, and then he and the mom have a lot more cute moments in the movie than in the book. One of the things that they say over and over to each other is over, done with, gone. That's so fucking cute. Nowhere in the book. Really? In the book, she's like, shut your cunty mouth, you little fuck. <laughs> you're like, whoa, <laughs> this is a sensitive child. That's too bad. Yeah, That's not a fan bad. of her. So then the next morning, 
Steve arrives with a wooden okay. horse. Okay, yeah, that's right. So he comes in with a with a wooden fucking horse, right? And you're like, this is weird. Who is this? I feel like when he first showed up, right, he doesn't even knock. Does he knock? I feel like he briefly knocks and then he just opens the door. Yeah, he, it's and like the like, way that your mom knocked in middle school. Where she's like, right, I'm coming in. Right. Like, it made it seem like at first glance he was almost like a brother or something, like an uncle, right, to Tad, whatever, because he was way too familiar with everybody. Kind of initially, he has an Al Borland vibe. Where yeah. He's like, I'm handy and have a beard. Yeah. And then he's yeah, like, I, can see I have that. an I'm butt fucking your wife vibe. Uh, very different. Yeah, very different. But it's good. Um, I like the fact that he plays this like two dimensional smiley character and then the next scene he's getting worked at tennis and that so that's like the one time in the movie that Vic is in any way antagonistic or shitty because he's kind of petty about being better right right but then right. Steve's like I'm yeah. doing your I'm doing your wife so yeah because the next scene is him playing a <laughs> trombone in bed and waking up this dude's wife yeah which I I mean I had never seen the film I didn't read the book so it completely threw me off guard I was like, what the fuck did I miss? Because all of a sudden it goes from everybody being hunky dory and, you know, at the house, like making breakfast for each other. And now it's this guy reeling your wife. What did I, have I to miss? ask you a real question? <laughs> Do you think they used protection or no. was Donna raw dog? <laughs> TM. Raw dogged it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Especially because uh they were married in real life. Oh yeah, for sure. So like they're like, and cut. And they're like, no, we're we're still doing it. Y'all break for lunch. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck my wife. <laughs> she puts her panties back on and looks at herself sad in the mirror. Yeah, that was weird. That yeah. was uh I don't know. But I mean, it makes I get her it. more sympathetic than the book because she's like, Oh, what have I done? Versus the book where she's like, Oh well, Vic, it's your fault because you let me feel sad and old. And it's like, wait. What? That was in the book? Yeah. She basically defends herself by saying that when Tad was gone at school, she would feel alone and she would feel sad and afraid of the It's like what she assumed or like what he actually like invade in the relationship. Uh, she. So she like assumed like. like she started she, flirting with him at that point and then they started raw dogging. Okay. So she, but what started that from their relationship from her and her husband? It's oh, just like she admitted admits that there's nothing wrong with the relationship. That's one of the things in the movie when she says, I have a terrific husband and a terrific kid. I'm like, yeah, that's accurate to the book. And she says that like communication had broken down, but it seems to be it's kind of like Pam in the office when she's like oh, upset that the life is relocating because so, it seems like she didn't want to leave New York. But then later they're like she could never go back to New York. But, you know, it's you know, it's so funny. Um, and I feel like this is completely flipped over where like. The guy from Pet Cemetery, he ends Lewis up. Creed. He uh, cheats on his wife. Yep. Right. And you don't think to yourself, like, what's the reasoning behind that? Or at least I didn't when I was looking or you know researching the film, doing the book, yada yada. Whereas when it's her, I'm like, no, I want to know the reasoning behind that. And I feel like that's like a, it's almost like something where I shouldn't. Right. I, I, I shouldn't delve into it because it's like, well, why do you feel like it's like, OK, well, he's just being a dude and he's going to cheat on you. But the chick ends up cheating on the guy. And I'm like, fuck this. This isn't how it's supposed to be. Right. I feel like men perceive women as having to scheme in order to cheat. Dr. Drew said something that was very interesting to me as a guy who's been cheated on in the past. He was like, rather than be upset at somebody who's cheated on you. Why don't we look at it from the perspective of applauding them for all the times they didn't cheat on you? I was like, that's wow. a rather deep perspective. And I, that's I, interesting. I, in reply, I say, fuck off. <laughs> She's my property. <laughs> no, but it, it's that, you know, it, she, like I said, in the movie, she comes across as much more sympathetic and they don't even get into those reasons. That's right. just how good of an right. actress D. Wallace is. You know, she is fucking great in this movie. Which is actually, I think Stephen King actually credited her being like uh, one of the best actresses to um, grace any of his films when it comes to like his book adaptation. Oh, for sure. But he, I mean, he lucks out. I mean, if you just look at Sissy Spacek and D. Wallace, and you're like, fuck. Yeah. Like they fucking nail it. And then, oh, add Kathy Bates to it. Dog. Like, are you serious right now? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, dog! So I had some spoilers for the plans on Slash's pod because August is the eighth month. Are we Jake's gonna do thing. it? 
we're doing arachnid themed oh, okay. eight legs, right? It has a spider. Why don't we do that? That'll be our August adaptation, which gives me plenty of time to engage in the 44 hour audio book. 44 I think, hours. I didn't think you were on board for it. I'll fast forward. If I'm listening to it at 1.7 speed, I'm really not. <laughs> when she's like, and also Chad's going to go through and listen to it first. And so he's going to tell me the exact time code where she's like, give me that dick, fat boy. And I'll skip the child sex and I'll be fine. They'll be ugh. just saying it's gross. Why would a, an adult man in fucking New England? Why would he write that? <clears throat> it's weird. Something weird. Raising my voice made me cough. It's not good. You need to remind me to keep well, my. It's about child sex, so I feel like it's fine. Yes, <laughs> that is an raise your voice way. because it's weird. It's weird and bad. <laughs> Absolutely, it's wad. <laughs> anyway, so you know, it goes from him beating his fucking ass at tennis, right? From there, we move to is them this... at post bone zone, raw right, dog in it, right? Back to dinner where they're having a wordless dinner, and Dad's like, "Well, fuck." Y'all that's bitches right, ain't gonna talk. Right. I'm gonna turn well, on the I'm TV. Just, I'm just gonna act like a shark, right? That is so fucking cool. It's funny because it's yeah, like it's he could cl- in the book they establish he's very cognizant, even though he's a child, that there's something wrong with the marriage. Right. So I gotta that. I gotta do something and cheer people up. I think it's great. Yeah. It's a great way of doing in action what the book did in narrative, which I think is so crucial in doing a book adaptation because you don't have that. Yeah, narrator. it's gotta be hard to do. It's Absolutely. crazy. But it's awesome. And we move on to first Vic takes the jag to the shop. The guy's like, fuck you. You can't get it back today. And the mailman's like, I was eavesdropping because I'm weird and creepy. But you should take it on to Joe Camber's house. He's in two fucking scenes the entire movie. They're pretty memorable, though. (laughs) I don't know. And no, it is true. That is true. I would take it to is it mechanic Joe. Joe Campbell. McCann Dick. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> what's weird is he stops by the homestead and picks up the wife and kid yeah i thought that was weird what? too you're like they weren't in the car before what they're like hey let's let's all go to the haunted house in the boonies <laughs> no leave yeah. the kid and the wife at the fucking house let her get raw dog by the guy I, I i imagine like uh oh sorry to cut you off no you're good she very clearly says in the book it was only five times what? and all this stuff. Really? But one of the things that makes him suspicious that she's had an affair in the first place is the fact that she keeps washing the sheets and she's like, never in our bed. But then they also say that the things were like rearranged in the house. And that's one of the things where he was like, somebody's been here. And it's like, that makes sense. It's so weird. It's like, why would you add these details? And then this, but he believes but her. You know what? That makes more sense than her just kind of acting weird in the movie and him kind of being like, is it true? What does he say? Yes or no? Yes or no. Right? I feel like that's so weird. Like, there needs to be more than just a hunch. Like, I need actual evidence. There's stuff moved around the house. That's another thing. I see them talking. I think it's her talking to him. I don't know. That's speculation because he goes back to where, you know, he thought he saw her and she was gone. So well, that scene, he's in the kitchen with her looming over her. She that won't is make so fucking weird. That whole scene is it's weird, it's, but I think it's way more visually dynamic than him sending a shitty unsigned letter. That's what he does in the book. Oh, really? He's like, your wife's pussy has got a mole on it that looks like a question mark. Oh, no. If you have any questions, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like versus this. It's like. I'm going to rub your nose in it. Like, I see you both. Wow. And I, so the thing when Tad's like, what happened? And she's like, oh, nothing. And then he steps in. You're like, oh, fuck. For me, having read the book, I'm sure you just to see that. Right. Happen, right. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I was watching on Michelle and, you know, she's in the kitchen. He comes into the kitchen and Michelle's just like, the fuck he doing there? <laughs> I'm like, hold on, you're on his side now. Like, <laughs> but they, they had just shown him picking up the kid, so logically it makes sense. But for some reason, your mind is just like, oh, maybe time has progressed. Like, why would she be that baller right, dashing right. brazen? And so it shows like he's not supposed to be home at that time. Yeah, and Busted. what was really weird is it's like Tad's there, which I thought was weird because the guy's just like, oh, where's Tad? You know, and she's, and she's like, like, he's like, oh, he's, upstairs. He's, he's upstairs, and you're like, why the fuck are you here? But that's the thing that shows that she's lying. And the ta- she doesn't think Tad's there. She's saying oh, he's asleep see, to I get him to fucking I didn't leave. Get that. Okay. But that's the thing. 
it, it adds an interesting wrinkle. And then it's, like I said, way more visually engaging than the guy opening a letter and be like, Whoa! <laughs> that's in the book. He's like, Whoa! and then he's like, where's that wailing sound coming from? And he's like, is it my bitch ass? Is it my cuckold ass? <laughs> is it my cuckold ass? Motherfucker. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Got a cough. <laughs> so they're up at um, McCann Dick's and uh, Cujo comes up for the first time. Right. And this is after he had been hanging out with the fucking bat and he's festering sore. He's not feeling the greatest. Um, Which I like if I may cut you off because in the book it is a flashback when they establish them meeting. Oh, really? So I like the fact that there's already the wariness with Donna. So keep okay. going. So, um, you know, he he being Cujo. Cujo walks up to the to the farmhouse. Uh, Donna sees the dogs like <laughs> Hey, fucking Tad, scoot back. This guy is pretty big and scary. Uh, not unlike, uh, <laughs> what's his face? Not the cuckold. Anyways. Um, Al Borland. <laughs> I was like, did we give him a name? Fuck. Dirty Dick Jones. I've already forgotten the nickname. Hold on. It was good. No, it was... <laughs> I don't know if it was good. I, I like Dirty Dick Jones, though. Fair enough. Steve um, Kemp. So, yeah, this big, scary dog. Coming up, uh, Tad, get the fuck away from the dog. Um, the son saying, no, you know what? He wouldn't hurt a fly, right? He's like, ah, he's fine. He's fine. Um, Which I like better in the movie than the book, because if the if he's really possessed by this evil fucking cop rapist, then why isn't he just always evil? Right. Versus this, it's like, oh, he is now evil because of rabies. Yeah, it's like a slow uh, degeneration, right? Compared to all of a sudden, it's just like something that clicks on, right? Um, so Donna sees charity, cuckold, sh- shucking yeah, corn. Yeah, shucking, doing fucking, was she shucking corn? Doing the Lord's work, shucking huh. corn. Okay. I thought she was like fucking washing clothes outside for some reason. It's um, in a little basin, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so she's shucking that corn. Um, not unlike Donna did to someone's dick. Oh, uh, oh dog. <laughs> he had a condom on. She shucked that condom off, <laughs> wadded it up, sniffed it, threw it out the window. Some kid on his paper route gets hit in the face, veers into traffic, <laughs> bodies everywhere, fire. And that's how Pet Cemetery happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then uh, I resisted the urge to sing. On record, I was so close to busting well, into the Ramones. Dude, I mean, it adds continuity to everything. Well, no, well, I won't. I'm not, <laughs> I am not going to condone people drinking any longer on my account with Brian's silly little disparaging game. Take a shot of wheatgrass. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Cuckold goes off with McCann Dick, and uh, she's like, McCann fucking... Dick's just, it, the more we say it, the more it sounds like a transformer from hell. <laughs> it's like sound wave, right? Where it like just the schlong changes into different <laughs> shapes and colors. <laughs> I like it. So she's wary of Cujo. Cujo licks the kid. Uh, then it cuts back to the monster words where he's, you know, Vic is taking the kid through the house and he does the monster words very accurately. He's, he's, so, he's so good with Tad. Right. Yeah. And that's when uh, Danny, Danny, what's the girl's name? Donna. 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 That's where Donna, you know, Says like, oh my god, you're so you're so good with the kids, infidel. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which, eh. and he's like, how am I with you? And she's like, awesome, but I'm not gonna fuck you. She's like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm full of that chunky sauce. <laughs> what? The ch- the raw dog chunky sauce from <laughs> Dirty Dick Dan. <laughs> People are going to need a fucking legend to get through this episode. We're like, what is Dirty Dick Dan? Didn't he have a different name? Because I'll tell you this, in 15 minutes, I'm probably not going to remember Dirty Dick Dan. We're going to go call him something else. Al Borland or something. I think that's what it was, Al Borland. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) And uh, then it cuts to the, nope, nothing wrong here. Commercial with the professor. And then it's a news story about the Raspberry Zingers. Right. Okay. You don't need it. You just say, hey, I have a planned trip for work. I have to leave. No one fucking cares, cares. about the crisis. It's so nobody. Nobody even fuck. cares. Nobody even cares what you do for work. Seriously. There's no relevance to it whatsoever. I don't even like it doesn't make <laughs> sense in the at least in the book. There's a scene where he's like, Tad, if you were going to sell eggs, how would you sell <laughs> eggs? Nothing right, like that happens. Right. Here. Yeah. Nothing. 
So but it, it could be great if they had like radio ads too. And so like, let's say she per- turns on the radio and the first thing she hears is, nope, nothing wrong here. And she's like, <laughs> God damn it, I just got bit by a dog. Right. Huh. What happens next? Uh, they... Is this is this does it cut back to Cujo? Uh where he's uh going underneath the house, going underneath the steps. Close. Or, That's close. very, very close. Um it goes uh, from Donna. So I haven't jumped that far. Yeah. Donna's <laughs> indifferent when they're talking about the whole thing. Then it cuts to the ad agency. They talk about they're going to have the special board meeting, and that's where he says oh, they're okay. leaving. Got it. Then it goes to the machine shop. He's sensitive to the sound of the grinder and runs off and under the porch, and his nose starts festering with flies. Yeah. So you were so close. I just had to add the, the scene because well, it's like you know. a 20-second scene where he's like, <laughs> I'm getting yelled at. I have to leave town. And you're like, I don't need it. One of these days, guys, I will be spot on. It's not bad, though. Yeah. Yours is the next thing that means anything because we've already established there's a crisis in the kitchen. Why do we need to reinforce that with yeah. some stupid scene where he's talking to somebody on a phone? You don't even get to see the person. That's true. Sillies. Silly billies, willies with dirty dick Dan. Nillies. Donna goes to Steve's house and she says, I can't see you anymore, Steve. So she pulls out a blindfold and gets raw dog. <laughs> That's not what happens. No, oh shit. <laughs> I might have dozed off. What does happen, Brian? So, you know, he gets super upset, like, what the fuck? Why can't I see you? And she's like, you know, I I I got a great husband, I got a great kid. Well, he, when he's in bed, he's actually really sweet. He's like, okay. Yeah. But then he puts on his pants. And then he, and he puts on his pants out. and he chases her out, chases, you know, chases her out the door, and you're like, okay, clearly you're not over this shit. Like, why the fuck don't you just leave her the fuck alone? I understand she probably get that great shit. But still, leave it alone. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, it's weird that he chases her outside. It's, it, like, it seems to me, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, because in the book, he sends a shitty letter after she breaks it off. He, you know, the whole thing comes out of him. Do like, you think trying he her. almost is like in love with her? No, I don't, in any capacity. It, it, it kind of implies it more in the movie than the book, because in the book, he tries to outright rape her. And that's when the glass breaks in that. When she's well, breaking in the off. movie, I'm pretty sure that's what happens too. Kind of, but it's a little bit, I guess, speedier, so it kind of moves past it. So it seems to be, and correct me if you think that this is wrong, the act of him putting on his pants and chasing her outside is almost to embolden himself and show oh, that she's ashamed Jesus. of this thing and to show like, why else would I be coming out of my house topless and chasing you down? Wow. Everybody's going to know you broke up with me and now... Everybody's going to know that I was slinging this yeah, dick that, like a grappling hook and be a snooch. That does make more sense. And that's also, you know, your cuckold could potentially see this, right? He does? Well, I understand that, yeah, but I like know. he like thinking like, well, you know what? I don't give a fuck. It's out there. So whatever, right? Well, it's it not is, my relationship. Yeah, It adds to in the book, she has this kind of sense of delirium where she's talking about all of the coincidences that lead to her being in that car with that rabid dog. And in the book or in the movie, it also works to the same effect of like, what's the what are the odds of him driving down the yeah. the road at the same time? I, I like it. I think that's way more dynamic visual storytelling yeah, than absolutely. a guy reading a book. Absolutely. Uh, so he's chasing after her. Uh, it cuts to Cuckold driving a sweet ass roadster, um, drives by, happens to notice um, Donna or what looks like Donna in an old fucking Pinto that... <laughs> It looks like Donna. She's driving a Pinto. It's probably Donna. Yeah, a yellow uh, Pinto with that. You're like, yeah. whoa. It's like a yellow kind of cream. Weird, whatever. Um, So he flips a bitch, which I find is funny, right? Illegal. He, he's sitting there and he's like really impatient. And it's just like, you know, there's more cars. There's more cars. There's more cars. And you can, it almost seemed like impromptu. Like they didn't even like plan for him to like flip a bitch there because like there's cars that are just like driving forward like Usually they're going to be like, okay, everybody stop. Yeah. And then he'll like flip a bitch. But he's just sitting there for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. Like, But it gives a great excuse for him to get there and they're gone. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So he turns around, um, goes back up the alley where they were and uh, finds that they're both gone. So he kind of had already had an inkling that there was something going on. There's a rocky, re- rocky relationship and uh, that just adds more fuel to the fire. Yes, there was a very rocky road relationship. The guy's great. Rocky raccoon. Checked into his room. <laughs> Take a shot. Only to find <laughs> Gideon's Bible. 
<laughs> you pulling a nard dog right now? Yeah, a little you bit. Fucking Andy. <laughs> Ed Helms said that he came up with that because of kids who used to make fun of him. He got the last laugh. Fuck all of you bitch asses. <laughs> Look how much money Ed Helms has been making in That's all funny. the bad movies he's made lately. <laughs> so he goes and picks up Tad, like we talked about. Ends up. So <laughs> this one's fun. Donna's like, Tad, take the groceries in. It's your job. And he's like, nope. <laughs> Get your baseball glove. It's a yeah. whore's job to put groceries away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know right away when he's just like, nah, you know what? We're going to play catch. And you're like, oh, fuck. Like Something. you did with Dirty Dick Dan's come. <laughs> and so Something's she, about to go down. Yeah, she. he asks, what did you do today? Just wondering. Oh, you know, the usual groceries, errands, breaking up with my love toy, <laughs> leaving out the last part. He look, looks at her like, I got you, bitch. Yeah, pretty much. Which is great because of the confidence. I was really worried in the articulation of the movie that he was going to like start doubting himself. Yeah. But you see your wife with the yellow pinto being yelled at by a guy. There's one conclusion you reach. She is not a fucking masseuse. She's not making house calls. She's <laughs> No, she is making house calls. <laughs> Just not the right kind. Raw doggy. <laughs> I have no idea where you're going with this. It's just a song I made up called Raw Doggy. Very good. How about this? Raw Dog Ing Inc. Like incorporated. So she could make house calls and she just, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> then it cuts to the barn where Cujo is sleeping. And I really love that he snorts and the dust comes up. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought that was cool. such an interesting yeah, little thing. It reminds thing. me of um, uh, Sandlot. Yes, right. yes, with the beast. <laughs> yeah. So the car pulls up, and this is where he finds the chain hoist. Doesn't make any sense in the movie, but in the book, it's a huge plot is it, point. Is it? Because they're, Charity... they're like clearly struggling. They're not living hand to mouth. They have savings. In fact, they have to buy the chain hoist out of the savings because they're waiting on the check from the lottery. Oh, wow. Okay. But it's a whole thing where she's been wanting to see her sister for six years, who now has two kids that she's never seen. And that's some extra stuff. That... Yeah, it's a whole thing about like spousal abuse. I mean, how and... many chapters was that? It, it, actually, funny enough, this book has no chapters in the audio book. It might have it in the page book, but it's just a lady talking for a long, right, long right, time. right. But completely useless. The whole so scene's kind of she. You know, you kind of get the idea that she wants to get away from the relationship based off of her kind of like bribing her way into seeing her sister. Right. In the book, she does not even try to get out of the relationship. She just wants to see her sister for a week. That's how desperate she is. She's going to give him the lottery ticket, all of the earnings, and the chain hoist, and he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, it's a just, bribe. Yeah. Essentially. And he's yeah. going to physically attack her and before he finally lets her in. You know why? Because he's going to take the extra earnings, take his friend Jerry, dick. and he's going to go get sling dick in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of mentioned that a little bit a in little the movie. Bit, yeah. Like, it's it's a more Booze like... babes in baseball, yeah. Yeah, it's more so in, like, passing than yeah. an actual, like, okay, this is what's going to happen, right? Yeah, it's specific. Like, Jerry even talks about, like, I haven't been with a woman in four years, so you're going to pay for me to get my dick wet? It's wow. pretty much that over. Wow. Okay. But, I, I mean, to its credit, it's like a two-minute scene, so it's not hard to stomach. Right, right, right. Then so, we cut to the shack where Joe is talking to Jerry with Cujo on the floor. You want to talk right. about? Yeah, yeah. So this is where um, you know they're both talking about what they're gonna do, what he's gonna do with the money. You know, oh well, your wife wants to go see her sister. You're really, really gonna let her go? And he's like, yeah, well, fuck it. I can go get my dick wet. She goes to see her sister. Everybody's fine. Um, you know, his buddy J Jerry. Jerry. Uh, fucking Jerry. <laughs> I think of uh, Rick and Morty. There you go. Fucking Jerry. Um, so Jerry's just, uh, you know, emptying bottles, throwing them down on the ground next to Cujo and he's clearly getting upset about it. Right. And that's when you're, you're really starting to understand, like obviously from before where it comes to the grinding sounds, uh, it's slowly eating away at his sanity. And, uh, well, I think to be fair, Cujo's upset. The reasons being twofold. One, he's obviously rabid and sensitive to sound Two huge environmentalist and he wants the guy to be recycling oh i like yeah. it i like it so he's like well motherfucker the bin's right there and you're Sorted. clearly throwing Plastics, it on the ground glass papers com compost although i feel like to be fair you're probably taking somebody else's job but <laughs> it's a fair rebuttal i can't argue with that anyways uh 
you know, he says uh, something along the lines of, you know, you know, you better watch it. You're going to upset Cujo. And he's like, dude, Cujo couldn't handle shit. You wouldn't be mad if I came at you with two straight razors. Yep. Um, and Thus foreshadowing the r- first to die. <laughs> right, right. So it cuts to summer camp. Vic picks up Tad and then they go home. And Donna's just sitting there minding her own butt fucking business at the sink, drinking some water. Oh, that's right. Then what happens, and then Brian? Fuck- do you want to do a challenge where I do a different accent every every time the scene setting changes? <laughs> You're so good at this. I don't know. I haven't done accents in a really long time. <laughs> this could be a terrible decision that ends all of our followership. Touche. I have to cough. That accent really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Dick Dan comes fucking mobbing through the door. This is the dirtiest like, of dicks. Acting act like he fucking owns the house, right? Like, he runs this shit. Just like the first time you fucking meet the dude. He's just like, I'm just going to give it like a, a one-two knock. Just just to be fucking cordial. And just open up and be like, ah, oh, look. Dirty Dick Dan's here to fucking handle shit. Right? And uh, she's just like, no, nah, I told you to get the fuck out. And then creepiness ensues. He kisses her forcefully. Likes the power of the Sid Reich. He, and so- then he starts to goose step her skirt up and try and fondle her Woman flapper. <laughs> Woman flapper. I like it. I like it. All the meanwhile, these people are actually married in real life, which makes me feel a lot better after the fact. You imagine because- how awkward it would be having sex after this scene? <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, she pushes him away. Um, glass falls over. He actually starts out by asking where Tad is. Tad, you know, he's upstairs. She clearly didn't know where the fuck Tad was. Yeah. Because uh, he got picked up from summer camp. Mm-hmm. So um, he comes at so her. So she punches him and then forcefully. he pushes her and then right. that knocks it over. Right. He pushes her, knocks over like a milk. Um, yep. I don't know what the fuck Jar, it is. Jar and there's some eggs too. Yeah. Um, something falls on the ground. She goes to pick it up. Uh, you know, he he says something to her. I forget what the fuck he says. He says something. He's like, you're crazy. I don't know. Uh, basically like I run this shit why the fuck are you getting mad at me um, and then that's when cuckold comes in right? yeah well Tad says what happened she says nothing and then dad walks in yeah which is odd because wouldn't she, uh, it, it's very weird because either she knew when she was lying to him that Tad was sleeping upstairs or she knew that Tad was home either which way it's very weird yeah because either if, way it puts if, her in an awkward position yeah because if she's lying to then hear Tad would be surprising to her right but she doesn't play it like that. So I'm not sure if it was in poor writing or what. I don't know. Because it doesn't seem that she's striking him with urgency because she's worried they're going to get found by Vic, who she knows is home. She seems startled to yeah. see Vic there. Yeah, that's true. Very odd. Yeah. And then he goes, yes or no? And she's like, yes, five times, raw dog. <laughs> that, hap- that happens, right? And that's and that's pretty much it for the relationship. Uh, I mean, da, 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 that, da, da. <laughs> that would be for me. Sorry, Michelle. Deal breaker. <laughs> It would never happen. I'd kill her. Um, wait, just kidding. <laughs> well, how do you know until it's happened? So I think that the moral of the story is you have to go home and kill Michelle so she can't cheat on you. Touche. Um, so then Vic's working on the Pinto, which I would have set on fire. That's just me. Might, I might overreact a little bit. There's yeah. a cute scene in the book where they're, they're like starting to like fix the little fledgling relationship. And he closes a, uh, an iced tea under the hood and breaks it. And they're like, ah, ha, 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 Really? Ha. Yeah, it's uh, weird. Yeah, that's awful. Because it shows he's a cuckold. He doesn't have a fucking spine about it. He's like, <laughs> all right, just sling that, oh, what do they call it? Woman flapper everywhere. <laughs> Woman flapper. That's the name of my new power metal album. Unleash <laughs> the fucking woof. <laughs> Woman flapper. <laughs> Ingve Malmsteen for owning that video of him on the plane. You know what I'm talking about? No. He released an album called Unleash the Fury because it, there's this video where he's on a plane and a woman like <laughs> spills water on him and he's like, you've unleashed the fucking fury. It's like, oh no, dude, is he really? 90% of people don't know who the fuck you are. Oh dude, Ingve Malmsteen is such a fucking quick, like, I don't know what you would call him. Hair uh, trigger. Hair trigger. Short fucking- fuse. Fingers of Fury when okay. it comes to the guitars. F- fret fucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 
<laughs> so anyway, he basically can't fix her fucking car. He can't fix it. He says, you know, well, I got to go out of town for 10 days. I think he specifically said 10 days. like Just enough or, time to get my dick wet. Three or four times. He's like, I'm going to be gone for 10 days. Not How many seven, days? not a week. Fucking 10. Um, well, I got to get my car fixed. Okay, well, take it to fucking McCann Dick. I'm sure he can take care of it. Right? Just try not to fuck him too hard for payment. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> Sorry, dude. You're just reacting really well, so I have no no recourse but to just try and make you laugh. Oh, shit. That's like the best part of you being on the show, because when I'm editing this and I hear your laughter, I'm like, I am, I'm feeling pretty good right now. You're my Andy Richter and I'm Conan O'Brien. I'm like, ma, ma, ma. I like it. I like it. So then it's back to Tad's room with more monster words. And then it's Brett walking out of the back porch. And I thought this scene was great. It's very similar to the book. They don't add a whole lot of unnecessary stuff. It's just a kid walking out into the woods. It's a little weird. And it's so ethereal. It's almost as if he's dreaming it. Yeah. But I kind of like that. It definitely seems like it's like a dream. Yeah. Um, it was all a dream. I don't, I don't know how that wraps up. It was <laughs> only a dream. Now he's taking the smoke and she's fucking a hag. <laughs> uh yeah so well, that's actually where... mr brightside totally worked for this right because isn't that like a basically a song about cuckoldry <laughs> or she's he's like i want to have sex with this lady but she's fucking this old man have you seen that music video no oh it's like old leathery face <laughs> he's like i'm gonna sling this tongue juice into <laughs> her puss hole and then <laughs> brandon flowers is like don't deflower the future mrs flowers <laughs> sorry no, we're good. That's like two or three shots right there. Dude, Worth. Somebody just guzzled down. <laughs> I didn't change my accent for the monster words or the back porch. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, we're good. We're good. Do you not want that? Do you want that? Take a poll at home. We'll do a whole episode where I will do a different accent oh or dialect. I can't even get through like two sec- two seconds of him doing his accent. So, I mean, this will be great. Give him one. Let's try it. <laughs> no. Boy, howdy. <laughs> I think I think the greatest is when we went camping for my fucking oh, bachelor Jesus. party. It was so good. It was so good. And like we don't know, like, because she hasn't said anything if that actually offended her or not. Like, I feel like she might have been upset about it a little bit, but it was so good. She I mean, they acknowledged it. Blonde hair, blue eyed, little the Aryan child. So there's a baby who went on a camping <laughs> trip with us with his parents. Blonde hair, blue eyed, and so I just made no. A well, few actually, references. I, 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 I told you. I said yeah. Devin. Yeah, Devin was like, "Oh, dude, like a perfect Aryan baby." <laughs> and then that's and Jake. Jake was like, "Bing." <laughs> you mean I have an entire weekend of material at a baby's expense who doesn't speak his English yet and won't let this scar him psychologically? <laughs> it's so good. Oh, we had a lot of comments that i'm so glad are not commemorated on any recorded medium are you lost oh god <laughs> anyways <laughs> inside joke find your own inside joke you fucks you which you can do by following at man with the screaming brian b-r-y-a-n or at gacy jones you could be our friends and then yeah, you buddy. could be like oh let's make jokes together and we'll i could be like pay Absolutely. me on patreon and you could have your own inside joke twenty dollars a month yeah yeah so is this where so he sees Cujo out in the, out in the forest out in the woods? Uh, they go back into the house and it's of them leaving right to go back to go to her sisters. Right? There's a brief scene of Vic leaving and kissing Tad, but then it goes right to Brett okay. and Charity leaving. So you're right, right, there. right. So and she, she even packs the fucking photo album, which she does in the book, which is such a weird. That is thing. such a weird thing. Yeah, it almost seems. You know, like, I pack a photo album. Take a phone. There's my photo album. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, keep going. Um, that right there, it kind of reminded me of her like constant fear from McCandick and how she's really trying to escape, right? Because she's yeah. like, "Well, I'm taking like some of my most prized possessions with me while I'm going to visit my sister." Right? Yeah, it comes across like that way more in the movie that she's just gone forever versus the book. Like it cl- seems that she's always trying to come home. Okay, and um. Yeah, she even kind of gets sick of her sister in the book, which is it's just kind of weird. That whole yep. subplot doesn't mean anything. Yeah, you know, and the son says, you know, are we taking Cujo? No, you know, just have your, your father watch him, you know, just, you know, remind him that, you know, oh, hey, by the way, dad, can you feed the dog? 
right? Because he's just like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I can't dick. One thing I thought was kind of interesting in the book, he doesn't refer to Brett by name. He always refers to him as the boy. I think that's like a southern thing. Yeah. I don't know, it's, it, it, it's good because she even like chides him for it. Like, say his name. Yeah. Huh. Say his name. Say his name. When Cujo is around you, <laughs> say, baby, I love you. Now do that same song in the third Reich sound. Oh, then you're acting kind of shady <laughs> in calling me baby. I love it. That's so Thank great. you very much. Yeah. You're wearing a gimp suit and shitting on my heart. <laughs> say my name. Say my name. Uh, ich bin ein Berliner. Oh, are you doing German? That's what that's what that accent is. Fuck. It, it, I can see. No, I mean I know that's what the accent is. But you you're mean the actual like speaking German? I said I'm a jelly donut. It's my favorite thing <laughs> in the world. <laughs> so one time we had a family get together, and my wife's cousin lives in uh, in the Germany now, and he's married a German lady, and he has a friend who's this tiny person who speaks German and English, and he's very like the sweetest person you've ever met, but everything he says is fucking hilarious because the accent i'm doing is like exactly him so just imagine how much funnier it is when it's not some idiot hamming it up on a podcast in his garage but it's just some guy earnestly being like oh yes i'm very eager to talk about whatever you want to say <laughs> he's such a sweetheart that's good that's good talking about father christmas <laughs> all day long guys all day long i love it cuts to cujo walking He's lumbering with ominous music. Joe's friend Jerry is throwing rubbish out. This is nicer. He's throwing rubbish out, sorting his aluminums for recycling. Instead of, <laughs> in the book, he's pissing on flowers. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, what a dick. Honeysuckle. God damn it. Chadwick. Chad, stop editing what you're doing. How many fucking times has a lady used the word honeysuckle in that goddamn book? Well, the lady, because the audio book we listened to had a lady. Oh, it's... Yeah, it's, where it's at least 30 times the word honeysuckle appears in that book. I feel like, like the lady's name is Ethel. Lorna. Oh, eh, similar. Yeah, that same age group. <laughs> My name's My Lorna. My name's Margaret. <laughs> I'm in a sewing circle. Also, I don't <laughs> like people of different colors. <laughs> You like how I didn't say anything racist when I was the German guy, but I go to the South and it's like instant racism. And it's like probably a sweet old white lady. Like Gladys from Legion? Yeah, pretty much. Nice throwback. Thanks, I try. Yeah. It's fun when you look at the amount of movies that we've already done and the ones that we already have planned, it's like, this is going to be a fun hobby for a oh, while. Yeah, absolutely. We got a lot going on here, guys. So, uh, buckle, so buckle up. You can see the fish line on Cujo's tail like we talked about during the scene where he's yeah. killing the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The action of him biting him on the porch and killing him inside and the whole screen door almost exact to the book oh really like, it's probably like the most accurate part yeah, i thought cool. it was very cool yeah yeah that's really cool and especially it's the first... when you could have cheap you could have cheaped out and just done a really quick right kill or right something. it could be like an off-screen kill or maybe just like the feet banging up and down on the ground yeah you know and be like whatever maybe like, like they a do with side... joe because exactly. in the book exactly he kills joe balls first versus oh. the movie it's like it pans to the outside and you hear a little bit of clamoring yeah yeah weak yeah it's right it goes from that like super intense kill to just like mccann dick dying off screen and you're like huh okay whatever So clearly slay of the game is jerry being killed right yes absolutely there's also that's the game changer that's where you realize cujo's playing for keeps yeah i it's 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 very close between that and the cop but it's like the cop's kind of funny at a certain point when it's like if you add the Benny Hill theme when yeah, he's like climbing bah, 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 in the rafters, bah, 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 bah. getting his ass bit, you're like, oh, wacky, wacky. Yeah, I I think it's more or less just because it's like a drawn out kill with the cop and like he's not necessarily killed right away. Like and it shows like uh, Donna looking out over to where Cujo's killing the dude and he's still like chewing up on the guy. I kind of wish so. <laughs> I like the fact that the movie is very rooted in reality and there's no real ethereal or incorporeal right. shit. But in the book, the guy, the cop who's dying has a vision that he saves the day and he gets to the car and he calls the radio. Oh, no. But then he realizes that he's still lying on the floor bleeding to death. He's being chewed up by a dog. Oh, that would make crazy. that scene that's way better. That's crazy. That's crazy. Also, I really like 
it, I don't know. Maybe it's just the comforts of home. Creature comforts. <laughs> but I love Jerry dying because it reminds me so much of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. When Leatherface rips open the door, clubs the dude and drags him in and slams yeah. it. Because there's like the stairs. There's a very narrow hallway. There's It feels he very claustrophobic. He breaks through the door and just like fucking slams him. Yeah, I can see that. Absolutely. Thanks. Dude, that, that sliding metal door in fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre still scares the fuck out of I me. I love it. And it's weird because it's not anything special effects, whatever. It's just the sound of the sliding door grating open and closing. Like, And it's like with such force. Yeah, right? I'm not a collector guy, but I had an action figure of that scene, which I really was happy with. <sighs> That's yeah. yeah, yeah. So... Um, so then we go and it's Joe calling for Cujo and he pulls up to Jerry's house and this is when he goes, oh my God, you're rabid. Yep. Yeah, we, we, got, we, we got that. We got that now. Yeah. So whatever. It's it doesn't happen often in the movie. Though. Yeah, that's like, you know, it's a one and done. It would be better if he got killed balls first. Because th- this, <laughs> this scene feels like almost like a PSA because there's no violence to it. There's no real effect. It's just like, oh. Just so you know, if you took a piss at some point in this film, the dog now has rabies. I'll be seeing you. (laughs) Rabid dogs will attack you for no apparent reason. Just so you're aware. Also, I'm going to die off screen. Don't let it offend your sensibilities. (laughs) Versus, uh, even if he said, oh God, you're rabid while his balls were in Cujo's (laughs) mouth. That's fine. I think that's a great scene. That's even better. Because that would be even fucking hilarious because he's like, his primary concern is, Oh, you've got rabies, not your not castrating my, me. My balls are gone. Thank you very much. Can I have another? Great. Now I'm gonna have to get rabies shots in my balls before you reattach <laughs> them. Thanks, Cooge. Yeah, yeah. Then it cuts to Donna and Tad driving, and the warning lights turn on. The fucking clunker, dude. It's just like I feel like it's like um, somebody learning how to drive like standard. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like a Rosie the robot from the jetsons having a fucking seizure yeah (laughs) yeah pretty much so in the book she like actually has a conundrum where she's gonna hire a babysitter and he like pouts about it and wants to go with her (laughs) versus the movie she just takes him i feel like it makes her a little bit more sympathetic in the book because she initially because she's like oh i don't want you to have to do that but then she selfishly is like i don't want to hear you fucking cry if our car breaks down we have to walk so again she's shitty yeah and then also it seems like after the fact where the kid actually dies right where it just makes it that much worse because you're thinking of all the potential things that could have happened where he could have just been fine at home yeah right so that kind of sucks she pulls up gonna get out his car seat is stuck and then she sees the dog ah you know what's interesting is the director even talked about when you see Cujo for the first time the way that the camera swoops in at a low angle she has her legs dangling out the side of her the car and you think, oh, well, the dog's going to come up from that side. But they reverse and subvert your expectation right. when the so dog you, comes up on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did you really, like it? I did. I did. Absolutely. And I, I like the um, slow progression of like, obviously, he didn't have blood on him before. But like, it just seems like it's not just blood, but like everything about him yeah. is just like completely covered in goo and slime and everything else. Yeah. And in the book, uh, one of the ways that Joe knows that something's wrong with Cujo is he shits in the barn. And so there's there's like shit, mud, blood, goop, all of this stuff on this dog, which is, you know, a staunch contrast to the white dog with like the, what is it, rum barrel that they have when they're saving skiers. Right, right, right. So... There's all this shit happening. There, he surrounds. There's no real dialogue. It's her and the kid. And she honks and rattles his brain, and he leaves. Then it's her and the kid just kind of waiting it out in the car for a while. And there's it cuts to other things, but really the point of it is she's there for on the third day is when the final climax of the film happens. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a standoff, right? Yeah, they described it as a siege, but yeah, okay, exact same yeah. thing. And um, I, you know what, you bring it up or I brought it up and I said, well, the mailman doesn't really have any importance, but he, he totally does. Yeah. Especially where they're like, she's like, no, it's fine because the mailman will come any second now, then we'll be saved. And then it cuts to the fucking mail room. He has like a bumper he's going to take. And the guy's like, nah, dude, they said they would notify us when they want their mail to be brought back. Yep. Oh, okay. So then he brings a bump- bumper back and, uh, nobody's coming to save him it's fun because it's way brief in the book she keeps harping on the fucking mail she even like starts saying it like a mantra to herself whereas this is like okay we're done right yeah that's pretty cool yeah i know it cuts back and forth between the cuckold 
being out of town and calling the house. He calls the house a couple times, yeah. right? And, you know, he's thinking to myself, or I, he's thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, he like, <sighs> she's getting that dick. That's right? what he thinks in the book too. Okay. They don't really make it known what he's thinking because again, nobody has cell phones. So it's like, well, obviously Tad's not home. He's not answering her phone. She's not home. So it could be any number of things, right? Well, his direction is somewhat aimless because they even talk about it with Roger when he's leaving that he doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know if they're in crisis. He doesn't know if she's like left him with the kid. She doesn't know if she's left with Steve. She doesn't know if she's left alone. Right. And that's echoed in the book. He becomes a much more valiant figure in the movie because he goes without any expectation on return. He says, I'm, I don't care about this job. I care about my family. Yeah. He makes a definitive statement. He fucking leaves versus the book. He has a cop go over to his house, finds all the vandalism that Steve did. Which and then, does happen in the movie as well. Correct. But the, uh, the different versions being. Vic he, comes he, home and he, finds it versus a cop finds it and calls Vic and then he leaves. Okay. Yeah. So he comes home not knowing, like you said, whereas the other way, it's like the cop lets him know. So instead of him just being like, well, I'm a cuckold and I don't give a fuck. I don't really know what the fuck's going on. Um, I'm going to go out and on a limb here and try and figure out what the fuck's going on, even though I could be jumping into God knows what. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it cuts know, back to the car. And uh, she gets out and while Tad is sleeping and she's going to try and go and she looks around, and doesn't see Cujo. And then there's a low shot where it's her feet and you can see that Cujo has been under the car and he's just watching her. Right. right In the book, right. she's actually throwing pebbles of gravel to try and see. He doesn't move. This is where he starts. They talk about like, the menace in his mind coming out. And that's pretty cool. She looks under the car, sees nothing. Why? Because he jumps from behind her. Uh, he jumps on her. She kicks him. She gets in the car. The kid starts fucking howling at this point. Yep. She gets bitten on the leg. Dude, that, and is he's a like, gnarly, that is a gnarly bite. Oh, it's great. It's, in the book, they describe her taking a chunk out of her thigh, which is even grosser. Because I was thinking, like, it's it's so much flesh there. It'd be so easy to do. And the kid, so they have a, a beautiful shot. You know, this is pre-Matrix, so the 360 rotation around it is phenomenal. Right. Where it's Tad, and he's sitting there crying, and it's her, and she's like coming in and out of consciousness, and it's circling the 360 perspective. Yeah, that around. is really cool. Oh, it's that is so really good. Cool. Absolutely. They built that by putting a pole under, like, in through the roof of the car. And then spinning it. it. And how spinning crazy, it. like, how, yeah. like, simply and, like. That's some ingenuity yeah, right there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, It goes back to um, Dirty Dan Dicks, Dickslinger. Right, he goes to the house, yep. tries to find Donna, tries to, f for some reason, calls for Tad. You're like, that's weird. Don't leave the kid out of this, mm -hmm. you fucking weirdo. Um, you know, he runs his hand over the knife, and you're like, okay, are you gonna kill these people? I didn't understand. I was yeah. like, that's really fucking weird, right? And obviously, um, nobody's there. Thankfully, um, he ends up just cutting up all of the fucking comforters in the house. Yeah, he does a lot of more destruction in the book. And like I said, he comes on stuff. I thought watching the movie, he was at least going to piss on something because I was like, oh, well, I mean, you can't show a guy ejaculating. Right, right, you can't. right, right. But I was kind of glad they just skipped it all together. I mean, albeit he is Dirty Dick Dan, so <laughs> he has to do something with that dick. But... Dirty Dick Dan Dick Slinger. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Sorry, I forgot <laughs> his formal title. <laughs> Cuts back to the car. The third. The... <laughs> yeah, the cop pulls up. Sees the bloody car, gets out, Cujo attacks him, he drops the gun. This is where we get the Benny Hill theme. Right, as he climbs right, right. up in the rafters. He climbs up the rafters, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's fucking safe. Well, Cujo is, I forget, St. Bernard's are like fucking eight feet tall. Yeah. Right? So he, he bites a chunk out of his ass. He falls forward. Um, Cujo gets hold of him, and uh, that's all she wrote. Right? Absolutely. And the kid, having seen it, keeps yelling, I want my daddy. I want my daddy. And she erupts and she's like, all right, I'll give you your daddy. Ugh, it's so good. Like it's so raw and gnarly. And it's just like, I could totally see like my wife is so fucking good with this baby. And the baby, there are just days where she like doesn't fucking care. Like she was sick this last weekend, which is how I got sick because she mutated a virus and shoved it up my fucking nostrils and killed me. <laughs> I feel like I got run over by a car that smeared Cujo all over it. Mm, apparently. And so... <laughs> There are times where she like only wants her mom. I want to be like, I'll get you your goddamn mom. 
<laughs> Never would I raise my voice at my little angel, but I could definitely be like, I got you, girl. And so when she did it, she was really worried about that scene. Or no, the director was worried about it because he's like, look, you're not going to come across as likable. That's a really shitty right, reaction. Right, and she's right, like, right. no, nah, dog. Like, every parent has been there. And yeah, sure it's, enough, it's she believable. said that she's gotten like fan mail saying, that's parenting and stuff like that. So oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's raw emotion. It's something that directors crave for, you know, their actors to be able to, you know, pull upon, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So then it cuts back to the car uh, from the home where he's been rubbing his dick off on the stuff. Uh, Tad is unresponsive. He starts having a seizure. And the kid apparently had some stomach issue when he was very young and actually had had seizures. Oh, shit. He actually just recreated what he he was super confident and calm about it. And but even as an adult, the kid in this interview I watched was like kind of mischievously giggling at the idea. He was purposefully biting her fucking fingers. Like he, when she was trying when to make she, sure he didn't choke on his tongue. Wow. And he thought it was funny. And he could tell as an adult he was still laughing. Because when what? she's saying, ow, 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 that's real. Because he's biting her fucking fingers. What a dick. It's hilarious. <laughs> whatever gets your rocks off, kid. Hey, I mean, whatever. Whatever. Been in a 40 degree car for a week. That's yeah. true. That's true. And that's crazy that it was 40 degrees out. But I feel like they did such a good job with showing the perspiration on their face. Yeah. Right? And you're like, dude, it's sweltering. Especially with like the outside shots showing like the rippling effect of like the heat. Convection right? waves, yeah. Heat wave. I love that song. <laughs> but I'm not going to sing it. All right, fine. I'm really trying not to. <laughs> You're good, man. <sighs> I'm going to have a fucking... Uh, I was going to say... A, I, first I was going to say a hemorrhoid. Pop it's a, a bubble blood in, vessel in his fucking yeah. eyeball. I have a hernia in my throat where the song just erupts out of the side. <laughs> So she opens the door. She's like, all right, now's a good time as any. I'm going to run into that house. And who's under the porch but Cujo? And she's like, all right, motherfucker. So she grabs the baseball bat like she's a baseball fury in the Warriors. And she's like, let's go, bitch. Warriors. Bink, bink. I kind of wish it was an aluminum bat so you get that sound so effect. So you get that, that thud. Pa, yeah, pa, yeah, pa. that would be cool. But um, yeah, so she she smacks him, fuck, four, three or four times. Sure. At least, at if least. not more, yeah. Fucking breaks it. Breaks that bitch. And then he jumps on her and she stabbeth him in the heart like she's Ahab and it's Moby Dick and the kid's Queequeg and the car is Ishmael. Who gives a shit? <laughs> she gets him and she gets into the house. And she gets water. The water. Yeah. She throws water on him. She's... And then the fucking dog erupts through the window. And that's your final scare. And she's like, I got you, bitch, because I found this gun. Was, I oh. wish it wasn't slow-mo. I feel like it kind of kills it, but whatever. I, I think that's the problem, especially with that time, because high definition didn't exist. Right, so when you had right. something like that happen, you would lose so much of the detail. You'd be like, I guess the dog jumped in. Right. That's true. Especially with the time frame, like the dog jumps, she grabs a gun and shoots. Exactly. Like it's it's almost like with the omen, right? At the end of the omen. So you're like, oh, what? What just happened? Yeah. Yeah. It's like Howard Stark. I'm limited by the technology of my time. Or whatever the <laughs> fuck he says in Iron Man 2 when he's like, oh, by the way, Tony, I invented an element, but I can't do it. So here, just have the element and all of your problems are solved before you conveniently don't. Sounds like you have some issues with it. I actually think that movie has some great redeeming qualities, but people shit on it all the time. I'm like, they took Whiplash and the Crimson Dynamo and they combined it, and it's actually very effective. And arguably even Cobalt Man, but whatever. But I digest. So that's when Vic shows up. She's been doing the CPR. She resuscitates him. Uh, they pick up the kid and they all walk to the thing, the porch, and it cuts very abruptly, freeze frame, and that's the end. They had toyed with the idea of doing an epilogue, but then the guy was like, no, like, it, this this works best. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it would make sense if the kid died. Yeah. Right? Because in the book, there's still another like 20 plus minutes after the kid dies. Right, but I mean, dialogue. if the, kid, the kid's alive, um, Cuckold's there, um, Donna's still there. So what else do you need to know? Yeah. I mean, at that point, it's great because just in phrasing, like she's alive, he's alive. And... Maybe maybe have an epilogue of like Dirty Dick Dan walking down the street and getting hit by a bus. Yeah, well, he gets arrested <laughs> in either form. The cops talk about it. Oh, really? Um, yeah, in the book, he completely confesses to everything. Well, he doesn't I mean, want in to get the movie, him. he confesses as well, but like they don't really show what happened. You so. wish he got more comeuppance, but it's whatever. Yeah. The point, like, it comes down to this. Like, what are a few thimblefuls of cum 
compared to like the <laughs> safety and well-being of the people you love. Right. I mean, at that point, he's like, all right, my people are safe. I, I've gotten over what is in truth a very minor thing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that, that's the thing. Like we as humans, like you're, once your trust is broken, it's like, well, it's forever burned and undone. But then when you sit there and you contextualize it with a truly traumatic event, you're like, what is a couple of orgasms versus being nearly mauled to death by a rabid dog? Yeah. So that's I feel true. like he looks at her and he's like, you look like you've had a shitty weekend. Now you know how I feel, <laughs> bitch. Cut to credits. That's it. And that's the end of the movie. Brian, classic, trashic, tragic. Trashic. Really? Yeah. I consider it a classic. Um, I could see why you would say trashic because it, without having read the book, I think I supplemented a lot because I liked the movie better than the so book. The, yeah. So whatever you don't like from the book, the movie compliments. Totally cherry picking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're taking it yeah, just as a, a movie, you're like. Why is this thing with the hoist in? What is this? Like, but okay, so I wouldn't. Okay, suppose I were to throw it up into the classic category, I would not categorize this higher than Carrie. In terms of cultural impact, no. In terms of like, if you wanted to create a, you know, it depends how you're critiquing it in terms of a classic. Because one of the things being, of course, cultural impact and also our personal preferences. In terms of personal preferences, I still think that I think mean, Carrie is a little bit bit more my kind of thing. Yeah, yeah but I do. Agreed. I mean, I very much like this film. I could see watching it again, but I think that the novelty would kind of wear off. Like, I don't think I watch this like five times, but yeah. I feel like with Carrie, just the enigma of it, I think I could watch it multiple times. I'd say the only thing that would have me hover between uh, classic and trashic is how easy it is for you to put yourself into the situation that's happening right it's not something where it's like some supernatural um this is a dog that has rabies that is a fucking 250 pound dog that could just destroy people that can happen to anybody yeah right so that's something where i i i'm kind of teetering between the two but i still i'm eh, it's still trashic for me that's totally fine. I don't think it beats Lost Boys, which I think is our current reigning yeah. classic. And it's, it certainly doesn't beat Blood Diner. Yeah, I don't think so. So then that's what you stand. Yeah. Um, any closing remarks before we move on to the ending? No, I think I think we're good. Perfect. So remember, we're on the quest for 100. If you can, please go uh, subscribe on YouTube. We have rededicated Chad from doing editing on the video podcast really we're just putting out the same podcast on youtube but we're going to be supplanting it with additional new edited content uh that's within our technological means and then follow us on instagram and all that shit where we have memes every day we have polls we have trivia challenges every weekday those of you who know i do gold medal goons silver medal goons i think i've done even bronze medal goons but uh, basically, it's just a quick trivia question. And it's a race. The first person to comment gets a shout out on our story. It's pretty great. Yeah, it's um, fun. Yeah, I, it seems relatively harmless. We have some very competitive, rapid competitors. Com competitive people. It's absolutely. great. I love it, though. Like, the fact that I matter to anybody's life is like, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, my wife doesn't even want to see me posting online. So much less somebody who's like sitting there, like, refreshing their page. She's like, I've got it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Some of them are cheating. Oh, uh, with Google, I mean. <laughs> it's yeah. hard. It is hard. For sure. Whatever. You want to send off? Yeah. If you ain't watching him dying, you ain't really trying. And for Brian, for producer Chad in the back, for myself, Jake at Casey Jones on Instagram, I'd like to remind you to go out there and do something you love. And remember that all work and no power play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs>